Despite the three and a half trailers we've seen so far, we actually know very few specifics about the sequel. And while we'll probably hear a bunch of information at E3, here's 10 things I'd like to see in the game. Keep in mind that I'm not at all a game designer by any means, so I don't expect any idea to be particularly good. The first idea is pretty obvious, get used to that, but I'd like to see every main weapon, sub weapon, and clothing article from the first game make a return. Obviously, that won't completely be the case since every special weapon in the sequel will be new. And for example, the Kraken Roller will probably be called something else since, since there's no Kraken, thank God. But that brings me to my next point. Number two is again a pretty obvious point, but I'd like to see a whole lot of new weapons and gear. In the first game, all the weapons had at least two variations of subs and special weapons, with a few having three after Sheldon's picks, the standard roller having four, and the splatter shot having five if you include the hero shot and octo shot. So far we have one new weapon class being the dualies, and they look pretty cool, but I wouldn't be surprised to see at least one more class announced, though I have no idea what it would be. In Splatoon 2, I'd like to see every weapon have at least four variations, which might sound like a lot at first, but if they include every variation from the first game, that's only one or two additional weapons. It looks like we're getting hero versions of every weapon class, but if it's like the first game, then they'll just be palette swaps of existing weapon sets, so I'm not going to count those ones. Some players would just argue for just being allowed to pick what sub and special you want to use, but I personally don't think that's such a good idea, because it would imbalance the game and most likely reduce the weapon and tactics diversity players would use in matches, with everyone probably using the same one or two specials. Granted, you would see that with most players using weapon with Kraken in Splatoon 1, but that's besides the point. Also, for the appearance of the weapons, it'd be nice if the variations weren't just the exact same weapon, but with a sticker slapped onto it. And I'm saying that because I'd like to know what sub and special weapon the opponent has before I get super close and engage them, and have to look and see if they have the sticker on their weapon or not. For gear, I'd like to see every brand to have every regular ability for hat, shirt, and shoes. For example, the brand Scallop should have an Ink Saver main hat, Ink Saver main shirt, and Ink Saver main shoes. And every brand should hopefully have that option while also having a piece available for every hat, shirt, and shoe exclusive ability as well. Basically, this chart that I got from Inkopedia will be completely filled in. This likely won't be the case, however, since with the existing brands and abilities, that would be over 800 pieces of gear, and Splatoon 1 had 257, and there's already new clothing brands being announced, so it's not going to happen. Also, since we'll be scrubbing for new sub-abilities thanks to merch, instead of having to re-roll and be subjected to Spike's horrible RNG, the brands won't really matter as much. Number 3 is again a pretty obvious one but a couple new abilities would be pretty cool. I can't really think of any good ones that wouldn't potentially break the game because again, I'm not a game designer. From what we've seen so far, include this ability from the trailer that looks like it might be double quick respawn or just might be a new quick respawn icon. And this ability, which could either be sub weapon defense up or just a retooled bomb sniffer. And then there's these abilities that look like ink resistance up was split into swim resistance and runner resistance up and you can stack it for increased resistance, but you know, we'll see. We'll see what it actually is. Also, these couple of new brands allude to new abilities, but again, you know, we'll, we'll see. For our number four, I'd be really disappointed if all 16 maps from the first game didn't make a return. Most of them probably won't be available at launch, but instead will be released periodically as free DLC with some of the new stages I assume we're gonna get. The only turning stage we've seen so far is Moray Towers, also known as Sniper's Haven or E-Leader Orgy. And I'm willing to bet that a lot of returning stages will be outfitted with upgrades, such as ink rails and grinding, like Moray was. And since the first game had 16 maps, 16 new ones would be pretty great as well, making a total of 32. So for number 5, all three ranked battle modes from the first game were just recently confirmed for the sequel. And while I won't be surprised if they just stick with Zones, Tower, and Rainmaker, I also wouldn't be surprised if one or two brand new ranked modes get released. I can't really think of what type of mode it would be, but while we're on the topic of ranked battle, for number 6, I'd like to see a regional ranked battle option, similar to how Mario Kart 8 has worldwide and regional options for online. 
in a shooter like Splatoon, having a good connection is crucial to how much you're going to enjoy the game. And the best ranked battle connections I've had, personally, were when there were Japanese Splatfests going on and I can only play ranked with players from Europe and North America. Maybe when Splatoon 2 first comes out, you can only play worldwide since there won't be enough players to facilitate regional options, but after some months and the player base grows, a regional option should be available, hopefully. And while the wait times between matches would most likely be longer, I'd rather wait 3 to 4 minutes for a really fair match rather than 1 minute for an unfair one. The players who got really dedicated into Splatoon 1 were the players who really got into ranked battle, not the players who stuck to turf war the whole time. And that'll happen more with Splatoon 2 players if the battles have the best connection possible. Number 7 on the list is a more detailed results screen and a Mario Kart 8 style replay mode. This was sort of hinted at with the detailing of spectator mode, which allows two switches to act like a floating camera to view matches, but it would be really great if the game automatically recorded the last couple of matches you play. Also in the first game, the results screen barely has any info on it at all, showing only kills and deaths in ranked mode. Information such as assists, turf covered, in the zone, substance special used, time on the tower, distance carried by holding Rainmaker, etc. would be really helpful to see who really contributed during each match. And while some people may think, with all that info on the results screen, there will be a longer time between each match, well, they can make it so that you can review the info for the previous match while you're on the loading screen for the next match. Or, you can just show all the info while in replay mode when you go back and review matches. Number 8 is a two player split screen online for Turf War, Private Battle, and Squad Battle. Since you don't need a gamepad to access the map anymore, it's very possible. You can do it in Mario Kart 8, you should be able to do it here too. This feature was sort of hinted at with the new amiibo coming out, where you can bring your saved gear over to a friend's house and play split screen there. But why wouldn't you just bring the entire portable switch over? I, I don't understand. But also, a local four player split screen mode would be great. Battle Dojo from Splatoon 1 was only two players, and such a joke that pretty much no one ever played it. And hopefully, Sam and Run will have both four player local and online modes. Although, I personally would contend that Sam and Run would be way more fun with upwards of eight players all fighting against the, the Sam and Horde. Number 9 would be the return of Splatfest, but this time maybe have some of them with a twist. For example, Splatfest, where you can only use a certain weapon class, like only use rollers or only sloshers, or even maybe where you pick a team that's a certain weapon class, like oh, this Splatfest we're gonna have blasters versus chargers, or you know, something along those lines. Also, I know it would be very tough to implement, but it'd be nice if they can make it so that during a Splatfest you can play Turf War or Ranked Battle. One way I could see it working is if in Ranked Battle, your team for a match was still decided normally, but if you're on the winning team, then some points get added to your Splatfest team's total. So for example, say if one of your team members is on Splatfest Team Marshmallow and three are on Team Hot Dog and you win, then Team Marshmallow will get one-fourth of a win added to their total, and Team Hot Dog gets three-fourths of a win added to their total for the Splatfest. And which Splatfest team each player is on would have to be anonymous, but it's a way to play ranked battle during Splatfest and still contribute to Splatfest total, because one of the worst parts, in my opinion, about Splatfest is that you had to play only Turf War all day long. And for people who preferred to play ranked battle, that was an unfortunate option. And in addition to Splatfest, in-game tournaments under possibly an official Splatoon 2 esports circuit is kind of a no-brainer. And they're probably trying to implement it right now, given the end of the very first Switch trailer. But we'll probably have to wait and see exactly what Nintendo is planning. There's also the World Inkling Invitational at this year's E3, but that could just be an extended gameplay demo similar to what they did with Smash 4 in 2014. And finally, number 10 is for increased amiibo support in crossovers from other games. If I had to guess, the first game only supported Splatoon amiibo so that the game could establish itself as its own unique IP. 
but now that it has achieved that and Splatoon characters have crossed into other games, I'd like to see other games cross over into Splatoon 2. It'd be nice to get gear from other franchises via Amiibo, similar to how it was done in Mario Kart 8, which would most likely constitute a hat, shirt, and shoes for another character. It doesn't have to be, say, like, every Amiibo from Smash Brothers. Of course, it would be pretty awesome if they did do that. But just like 10 to 20 or so from the major Nintendo franchises. Also, the Flood from Super Mario Sunshine would be a perfect weapon for Splatoon, with the Hover Nozzle as the special weapon being similar to the new Inkjet special, and the Rocket Nozzle can appear whenever super jumping as like a cool little Easter egg. Also, even though it's not radially symmetrical, a reworked Delfino Plaza would make for a pretty awesome stage, or maybe a map for Salmon Run. Or, even better, bring back the Serena Beach Hotel level for Salmon Run, which would reference the Manta Storm level from Mario Sunshine, where you had to fend off the big Manta, and it would split into the little Mantas. Now that would be awesome. Now for a bonus idea, that is definitely a long shot, but I think it might be worth a mention. One year after launch, one thing that would really change up the established meta would be if all the weapons and all the old specials from Splatoon 1 just suddenly return. Granted, a lot of the old specials would have to be modified so they're not overpowered compared to the new ones. And one last thing, which is mostly a personal gripe, but why isn't all this cool Splatoon 2 merchandise available in America? Japan and Europe are getting the Splatoon 2 Pro Controller, the Splatoon 2 Joy-Cons, Japan is getting the headset and all this 7-Eleven promotion, and at this time, the states are getting none of that. And although I'm probably going to try to order the controllers internationally, it's, it's not the same. I'm gonna have to translate the pages, I'm gonna have to wait like a month for shipping. It's just not the same. So those are some of my best ideas. I made a long list a while ago of things I'd like to see in the sequel, but most of them are most definitely probably not gonna happen. For example, a mode where you have a larger team than just four players, where the teams could be 6v6 or 8v8, but that would most likely be just too cramped and too crazy, and it would look something like this.